in order to change, in order to be changed by God, we must become more like the saints. We must imitate the holiness, the saintliness of those servants of God that have gone before us. We must understand what saintliness, holiness, truly looks like. In the fourth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, Jesus gives a description of exactly what holiness looks like. He tells us, blessed are those who are meek, who are pure in heart, who are peacemakers, who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Those who will be persecuted by the world for Christ's sake. If we desire to imitate the holiness of the saints, we must ask ourselves, how can we grow these virtues in the soul? How can we cultivate these virtues in our lives? St. Gregory Palamas teaches us that love of God is the starting point and is the source of every virtue. And he goes on to say, love of the world is the source of every evil. Love of God is the starting point and source of every virtue. And of course, as St. James, the brother of our Lord, writes in the New Testament, if we are friends of the world, we make ourselves enemies of God. We cannot be friends of God if we become friends of the world. Because love of God and love of world are opposing forces in the heart. They oppose each other actively. If we seek after, if we desire, if we love the pleasures and the things of this world, we cannot love God. Whatever is sown in a field determines what will grow there. And so it is with the soul. If we plant, if we sow into the heart base longings for the things of this world, then passions will grow within us. If we read spiritually nourishing books, if we attend holy services, if we pray, if we meditate on the lives of the saints, read the scriptures, then we have a chance for the virtues to grow within us. But if we delight in the things of this world, the things that grow within us will be destructive. It will be evil. As it says in the book of Job, the devil lurks beneath different trees of pleasure, waiting for the unwary to taste its fruit. This is the pleasures of this world where the devil lurks. Because love of God and love of the world are like the poles of two magnets, north to north, forcing apart, acting in opposition. Love for the world grows from love of materialism, love of the body. And love for God grows from recognizing everything that he has done and is doing for us and for our salvation. Recognizing and being thankful for the goodness and for the beauty of the world around us and the capacity to be able to recognize and enjoy this beauty. All of this is given to us by God. The things of this world, when we talk about the evils of this world, we are talking about the things that are created by man the philosophies of man, the philosophies of the devil. Even the fallen world in terms of nature still retains the beauty that God has put into it. And we can perceive this beauty. What a gift from God. We must learn to recognize every thought, every feeling that prevents us from loving God as we should. This is absolutely vital for our spiritual health. To be watchful of everything that moves in our heart, everything that comes to our mind, and to spot a false sense of anger towards God, a false sense of 
injustice, a sense of injustice, a false sense of judging God by our own standards or the standards of the world. Anything that diminishes our love of God is of the devil. It is to be rejected, it is false. Everything that diminishes our love of God is demonic. True virtues cultivate a joy that cannot be stolen. A joy that cannot be stolen. The pleasures of the world, the pleasures, the pleasures of the body, we know, are fleeting. They pass away, as do our very physical lives. All of this will pass away. We must, we must come to our senses. Every one of us must, must wake from our madness, and it is madness. Let us, with horror, be in wonder at the ease and the enthusiasm which we so often exchange the eternal things of God's kingdom, the joys of God's kingdom, for these momentary pleasures of the world. Let us wake from this madness. Let us reject everything that the world would try to entice us with. Because everything that is offered to us, to tempt us by the world, the flesh and the devil, enslaves us. All of this would enslave us. As human beings, with the dignity of being created in God's image, each of us is called to things above this world. It is a wonder, it is a mystery, it is a miracle that we, who are flesh and blood, are called by God to things above the things of this world. Satan rules in the philosophies and the plans of this world. And we must reject it all. And we must learn to see anger, pride, vanity, the riches and status that the world would offer us as things that give the devil power in our lives. All of these things grant the devil power over us. They are the devil's snares through the things of this world. But the virtues the virtues that are the, the fruit of true freedom in God. The virtues which are the true fruit of love of God. Are a sign to us of our high calling. Are a sign to us of the dignity that God would restore in us in our humanity through Christ. Let us recognize that love of God is truly a foretaste of the eternal joy of God's kingdom.